is your name, please? My name is Robert Palmy. My name is Robert Palmy. My name is Robert Palmy. Only one of these men is the real Robert Palmy. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Singer Richard Hayes, Peggy Cass, Ralph Bellamy, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening Bud. Richard, I want to tell you that it's always a joy to hear you singing up a storm every morning with Arthur Godfrey, and it's a joy to have you with us tonight. Well, thank you very much, Bud. It's a pleasure to be on, on this side of the of the television camera, and thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome. Thanks for accepting it. And now, will you kindly, each one of you, open up your envelopes for the first time tonight, take out the affidavit cards, and follow along with this first one as I read from mine. I, Robert Halmy, am an adventure photographer. Within the past three weeks, I have photographed a hunt with King Hussein in the Jordanian desert, a tiger hunt with the Maharaja of Bundi in India, and the world's most punishing automobile race, in which I also drove one of the cars. This race is called the annual East African Safari, and the course is some 3,000 miles long. En route, we were stoned by unfriendly natives, ran into a leopard at almost 70 miles per hour, negotiated 99 hairpin turns in one 98-mile section of mountain road, and finally wound up in a ditch in Tanganyika, an hour away from the finish line. I had been driving over this suicide course without relief for 67 continuous hours. Signed, Robert Halmy. <laughs> Panel, you heard things start off this evening with these three gentlemen all claiming to be adventure photographer Robert Halmy. And let's start this first round of questioning with Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Oh, number one, um, what countries surround Jordan? Saudi Arabia. On the south of it, you also have Syria and Iraq in the northeast part of the uh, country and Israel. Number two, what's the source of the Nile? Well, it's in uh, Lake, um, Lake Victoria in Abyssinia. Number three, uh, uh, where is the Bakota tribe located in Africa? It's northern Kenya. Uh, number one, where's the Ashanti tribe located? That's in Tanika. Number two, uh, where's Mount Kilimanjaro? In Kenya. Uh, up, up north in Uganda, in between Uganda and Kenya. Boy, you've really been playing the road shows, haven't you? <laughs> 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 Number one, were there any women on this um, uh, uh, African safari? Yes, there were. Uh, number two, uh, did they crack up? Uh, yes, uh, just before the end of the, of the race. Who was it who cracked up? Pet, uh, pet moss. And number three, uh, can you tell me what other animals you ran into? Well, I didn't run into any other. So you only ran into a leopard? Yes. Uh, number one, did you... Did you <laughs> <laughs> That's enough, I guess. <laughs> number one, did you, uh, did you uh, drive an ordinary car? Well, yes, we drove a Triumph, which I think is an ordinary car. It was, it was the car souped up in any way, number two? No, just carefully looked over. Number three, did you have any extra protection against these animals? No. Richard, number three, when you ran into the leopard, what kind of car were you driving? I was driving a Toronto. It would been funny if you were driving a Jaguar, I'll tell you that. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, number one, what is the Maharaji of Bundy's name? His name? Yes. What, what, you, what did you call him? I call him Your Royal Highness. Number two, what did you call him? Does he have a name? Outside of your Royal Highness. You, you start by Maharaj Bundi, and then you call him just Bundi. I see. Number three, is the Maharaja married? Yes, he is. Was his wife along on the safari? The Maharani, no. The Maharani wasn't. I see. Oh. Peggy. Hey. Number three, what is the name of the wife of uh, the K King Hussein? Anne. And Number two, do you agree with that? Yes. Number one, do you agree with that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, number three... Uh, who owns the Cameroons? The Cameroons used to be French. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, number uh, two, were there any Land Rovers in this race? Uh, only to p pick up the bodies. <laughs> uh, number one, did you have a co-driver like you know to... Do we have an extra driver? Well, I mean, you know, a fellow yes. sitting beside we you had, to read the map. We had a driver and we had a life man from Life Magazine traveling with us. I see. Uh, hey, that's all. Stepped up to the finish line we have, and let's go for the work now of finding out who is the real driver and photographer. So it's time to vote. Will you do so right now, panel, without consultation? Will you vote now for number one, number two, or number three? The team of challengers will, as is customary, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Hey, that's fast. Richard, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three only because he doesn't look like he spent much time outdoors. Number one looks like he's got a great tan and that he spent a great deal of time outdoors. And uh, it's probably number two, but I make prettier threes, so I voted for number three. <laughs> Peggy, what is your selection? Well, you think I'm kidding, but I voted for number three because he's got such a terrific tan. <laughs> person and he knew about those Cameroons and that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, which do you think? I voted for one? number two. He's the only one who gave me any correct answers. You're oh. kidding. Right. Oh, oh no. Kitty. Oh, Ralph, I voted for number three. I thought he gave the best answers of anybody and that's why. <laughs> correct or not, they were the best. Well, all right, let's see if we come up with the best conclusions now as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real adventure photographer and driver of the racing car. So, will the real Robert Halmy please stand up? You had the whole panel scared there. Well, he, uh, he sure had the tribes mixed up around over there in Africa. Well, he hasn't played it as often as you have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out about the others. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Bob Rambo. I'm diving coach at the University of Pennsylvania. Oh. And number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Agazarian. I'm an importer of kippers and smoked salmon from Scotland. Thank you. When we check the score, we find that the panel was smart. They got three right. That means only one incorrect at $250 for you gentlemen to parcel out amongst you. And of course, from uh, Salem Cigarettes, you also receive a carton of Salem's on your way out. We thank you very much for being with us and hope you had fun. Good night. God bless. <laughs> Now, everyone, let's relax for a minute and take a look at this delightful film and discover a new world of springtime. Now, pal, may I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Dale McClements. My name is Dale McClements. My name is Dale McClements. And you've had a look up there. Now give a look at your copies of this affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, Dale McClements, am a student. In addition to the usual academic subjects, I have studied ballet since I was five years old. Recently, however, I have concentrated on gymnastics. And last July, I won the Canadian National Gymnastics title. Later this year, I hope to go to Prague as a member of the United States team competing in the World Games. I think I stand a good chance because last month, I became the AAU United States All-Round Gymnastics Champion. Signed, Dale McClements. Very well, panel, you heard these three persons all claiming to be Dale McClements, champion gymnast. We'll start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. I'm not terribly familiar with gymnastics, but uh, what is a tutu, number one? I'm not sure. Number two, what is a tutu? It's a ballet number. And number uh, three, what is a tour jeté? Tour jeté is a, is a leap in the air with a half twist. Number one, uh, what is a, a, a pas de deux? A dance with two people. 
Number two, who is Balanchine? Balanchine is the head of the New York City Ballet. Number two, who is Diaghilev? Three, who is Diaghilev? I think she's a Russian dancer, I'm not sure. Uh, number one, uh, would you know who Serge Lifar is? No, I don't. Number two, would you know? No, I wouldn't. Number one, where is Nijinsky now? Number three, I'm sorry. Uh, I think uh, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that exactly where he is? Yes, uh, that, that's a shame. Richard. Let's see, uh, number one, how old are you? I'm 17. When did you start studying ballet? I've been studying ballet since I was five. How many years ago was that? Oh, <laughs> long time approximately ago. Approximately 10. Uh huh. Number two, what is a turnout in ballet? A turnout is when you turn to the right after fifth position. Number three, what is a turnout in ballet? A turnout is uh, the. Uh, uh, as much as you can get your hips out, uh, turned out like your feet are turned to the, uh, to the out, to, to uh, left and right. I guess it's like a turnout then. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like guess so. What is, what, number one, I'm sorry, number one, what does AAU, the initials AAU stand for? What do they stand for? Amateur Athletic Union. Number two, is that? That's correct. Peggy. Uh, number three, um, how many push-ups can you do? I can do 27. 27. Uh, number one, in Winnipeg, is there a ballet company? Yes, there is. Number two, in Vancouver, is there a ballet company? No, there isn't. Number three, who's Avery Brundage? I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, uh, number one, who is Plisitskaya? I don't know. It's a name I know. <laughs> <laughs> number two, have you heard of Plisitskaya? No, I haven't. Number three, have you? No, I have not. Maybe I'm not pronouncing her name right. Plisetskaya. Plisetskaya, help. <laughs> Ralph. I don't know much about this either, but number one, how many events are there in, in gymnastics when you uh, compete? Well, in, in girls' gymnastics, there are four events in the all-around and two special events. Uh -huh. Number two, what are the first three steps you're taught in ballet? Well, you're taught uh, first position, second position, and third position, if that's what you're Number three, order. what are those positions? Well, first position is uh, your feet uh, together, your heels together, that's first position. Uh, second position is uh, your, your uh, right or left foot in front of the, uh, the other foot with the, the heels just touching the instep. Right. <laughs> right, that's all the time we have for any more further ballet lessons. We'll have to go to the business now of writing down which one of these we think is the real one. So will you do so now without consultation and vote for number one, number two, or number three? All set? Oh, well, you're all set. fast tonight. Richard, which one did you select this time? Well, I voted for number two only because he came dressed. <laughs> Peggy, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I voted for number two because he said there wasn't any ballet in Vancouver, and I don't know whether there is, but he seems so sure. <laughs> and he came dressed. Yeah. Ralph, which one do you think? I voted for number one. It was a toss-up between one and three. They're both uh, very well developed muscularly, and uh, but number one, I think, had... Uh, um, Quicker answers and seem to Rob, would you put your card up front under the new oh, I'm system? Sorry. So we all can all see. And Forgot Kitty. It. I voted for number two because any girl who's a ballet dancer who doesn't know what a tutu is can't be a ballet dancer. It's the little skirt they wear, that little, <laughs> you know. But you asked about Avery Brundage to number three, and isn't he the head of the AAU? I think he's dead. But he was a little while ago, but and he didn't so know young. what it was. <laughs> he's oh, so young. I hadn't thought of that. Well, anyway, I'm sorry I if you're unhappy, three. but there number it is two. now. The die is cast, and let's find out whether you did well or not. There are three for two, and one for one, and none for three. Let's see what cooks now as we resolve this whole thing without any further arguments. And find out which one of these persons is the real champion gymnast. So will the real Dale McClements please stand up? <laughs> You may ask about the tutus. You never heard of a tutu? 
What's that little tube skirt you wear called? The little fluffy skirt. skirt. Well, in gymnastics, it, you don't just wear a plain leotard. Well, what about in ballet? ballet? Well, I haven't really been studying strict ballet for about five years or so. Oh, and you're so young. Oh. They're all so young. <laughs> probably never heard pronounced so well anyway. You know, I probably heard just tutu <laughs> in the back <laughs> instead of tutu. <laughs> Could have been the start of Tutu Tootsie Goodbye, after all. <laughs> all right, let's find out about the others now. Number two, you got the greatest number of votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Mark Conrad and I teach Latin in New Rochelle. <laughs> and number three, you didn't get any, I'm sorry to say, but what do you do and what is your real name? Uh, my real name is Ernie Austin and I'm a stagehand with My Fair Lady. <laughs> You did the best tonight at fooling the panel. There were three incorrect out of this one, and at $250 each, that's not a bad total of $750 from Salem Cigarettes. You can close your mouth on that, even though it is exciting. <laughs> and, of course, a carton of Salem's for each of you. Thank you very much for adding to our fun this evening. Hope you had a good time. Good night. God bless you. Uh, incidentally, Miss McClements is an amateur athlete, of course, and is a, uh, has appearing tonight with a special permission of the AAU of the United States, and... Her winnings are to be donated to the AAU Olympic Development Fund. Now, the next 60 seconds are guaranteed to put you in a refreshing frame of mind. Watch. Our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is David Brown. My name is David Brown. My name is David Brown. Again, follow along, panel, if you will, please. I, David Brown, am curator of mammals at Marine Land of the Pacific. My primary concern is the study of the diseases and behavior patterns of the dolphins, seals, walruses, and other mammals in my charge. But I had great fun training Bubbles the whale. We give public shows every day in which Bubbles and her whale friends jump hurdles, wear hats, sing and dance, Shake hands and squirt water at the patrons. Signed, David Brown. <laughs> Three stalwart gentlemen this time, panel, and you heard them as did I, all claiming to be David Brown, trainer of Bubbles the Whale, among other mammals, and we'd start this round with Richard Hayes. Richard? All right, uh, number one, how can a, a, a dolphin shake hands with anyone? How can a dolphin? You train it, you have a platform, you feed it, and after that kind of process, it will come and shake your hands. Number two. Would you think? Um, I, I, I don't think you understood me, number one. Number two, how, what does he shake with? <laughs> I mean, he's a fish, isn't he? Uh, with the flipper. Yes, with the flipper. What part of the fish's anatomy is the flipper? Well, it's... His hands! <laughs> I'm glad I asked that. Number, number three, uh, is Bubbles a male or a female? Uh, Bubbles is a girl. Bubbles is a girl. Yes. And does she have very many friends after squirting the water at the audience? Yes, she uh, does it very nicely. <laughs> number two, tell me about some of the... Uh, what kind of diseases uh, a dolphin would have? Well, as dolphins, in fact, all mammals are prone to diseases that we... Uh, like measles? Peggy, <laughs> probably a cold from in the swimming Number two, water. where is Marine Land located? It's located on Palos Verdes Peninsula. Thank you. Uh, number three, uh, can dolphins, do dolphins talk, dolphin talk? Well, actually, uh, they speak English. I see, thank you. With their hands. <laughs> number, number one, is it legal to catch dolphins? Yes. Is it legal? Yes. It is legal to catch dolphins. Number three, do you agree with that? Yes, it is. Number two, do you agree with the fact it's legal to catch dolphins? Yes. Number three, when dolphins are dying, what happens to them? They die. They lose their skin very quickly. But number one, isn't there color change? There should be a color change in that. I didn't get that right. Uh, number one, there was a uh, very popular television series uh, filmed on the coast, part of which was uh, made use of the facilities at Marineland. Would you know the name of it? The series? Yes. I don't recall it. Would you? Because I've been on a trip. Uh, sea Hunt. And uh, number three, who was in Sea Hunt? 
I don't know who was in it. Sihan. You know who was in it? Number two, who was in Sihan? A great number of people. Well, who's the star of it? Lloyd Bridges, I think. All right. Um, number, uh, number three... They have discovered, it seems I read recently, that there is a one of the mammals uh, which are a part of your study, which may turn out to be brighter and more intelligent than human beings, and also is very playful at sea, uh, dancing and bouncing around ships. W what, what, which mammal would this be? Well, there are two parts to that statement. One is accurate, the other one isn't. Uh, the dolphin is the one which is possibly uh, more intelligent than human beings relatively. And you thought there were two parts to it. What's the other part? I didn't realize. Go ahead and answer. Well, it's the porpoise who is more playful around the ah, ships. Ah, I see. Ah, oh, yes. Kitty. Number three, what's the difference between a porpoise and a dolphin? Uh, well, there are several external differences. The uh, dolphin has a beak, sort of a concave beak. The uh, porpoise has more of a blunt uh, snub nose. Thank you. The dorsal fin. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, who was the, the whale in Moby Dick? Uh, the great white whale. And what kind of a whale was it? A sperm whale. Number one, what is a sperm whale? A sperm whale is a <coughs> toothed whale that has the very, very known sperm, very precious oil that's used for jewelry. In. Number one, three, what is the, what is the, when the whale hey, that's spouts, all the time happens? we have. We have to stop right now and get to the business of marking your ballot. So will you do so, panel, immediately and without consultation. Voting as you do for number one, Number two, or number three. <laughs> Mark them up. All ballots marked? Well, <laughs> there, you did it. Okay, Richard, which one did you pick this time? Well, this is kind of a difficult one. I picked number three because any man that trains walruses has to have a mustache like that. <laughs> number three. And Peggy. Uh, well, I picked number two because he knew the address of Marineland, partially, and be uh, well, I don't know, he just struck me as being the one. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, which one struck uh, number you? Number three, I was all over there. I went with all three of them at various times, but number three, mainly about the dolphins and the porpoises. Yeah, you have an expression like a loner. You are. I, you're right. I voted for number one because we had a gentleman on who trained porpoises to speak. And I didn't get him. I thought he looked too much like a scientist. He wore a beard. And I wasn't going to be fooled this time. So I voted for number one. I think number three gave marvelous answers, as did number two. All right, let's see how this wraps itself up then. Let's take a big, long breath and a dive into the pool and come up with the right dolphin, shall we? As we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real trainer of Bubbles the Whale. So will the real David Brown please stand up? Oh dear, well you did pretty well. You spread the votes and scattered them for the second time tonight. Let's find out about the rest of you. Now number one, with the beard, would you tell us please what your real name is and what you really do? My name is David Greer. I am the owner and director of the Greer Art Gallery in New York City. You got the greatest quantity of votes. What is your real name and what do you do? Uh, my name is Philip Andrews and uh, I'm editor of Group Travel Magazine. Thank you, well, as we check the score this time, we find again for the second time tonight there was only one correct and three incorrect. Three times seven, 250 gives a total of $750 from Salem. Not bad, gentlemen. I think you'll agree. Also, of course, a carton of Salem's for each of you. And if you had fun, that more than makes up for that extra 250 that you didn't get. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Good night. God bless you. Now, here's how you can get relief of headache pain. You didn't get all three? I just uh, got two. Oh, I thought you got all three. So Pat. did I, but I was just kidding myself. Dreams <laughs> <laughs> of glory. Richard, I don't think you have anything to worry about. The, the, the rumors that's around, the rumors that are around, you know, that the porpoises and dolphins are being trained to sing. Did you know that? Well, you know, I've heard some of these new rock and roll singers, and it sounds like porpoises. <laughs> <laughs> they get pretty close. <laughs> I know what you mean. 
Well, you've brought me the usual wonderful, warm, good time that you always do, panel. I always hate to leave you, but that old time runs around, and so I have to say to you, good night, panel, and God bless you. Good night, bud. Good night. Good night. Bud Collier saying good night for Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. This is Harry Morgan. Coming home to the Pete and Gladys household is like opening a Christmas present. You never know what you'll find. Next on most of these stations.